Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up multi-factor authentication on SSH. I'm going to be doing that in Ubuntu instance on Oracle Cloud, but this instruction should work on pretty much any Linux distribution. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and log into your server and switch to an account that has pseudo privileges. Once you have that done, go ahead and run the following command and that will go ahead and install Google Authenticator module on your server. Once you have the Google Authenticator installed on your system, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make a change into our PAM configuration file. So to do that, I'm going to use Nano. You can use text editor of your choice and that file is located in Etsy, PAM.D and SSHD. And in this file, we're going to add the following line. And there's one thing here I want to add is if you're going to have users on this server that are not going to use multi-factor authentication, you're going to want to add this no okay parameter and what that would do is if you have a user that doesn't have set up multi-factor authentication that user won't be prompted for a token on login so just make a note of that so you may not need that in my case i don't really need it since i'm only going to enable multi-factor authentication for only one of my users so i'm going to go ahead and remove that and i'm going to go ahead save the file and close it and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make some changes in our ssh config files so that will be an Etsy SSH sshd underscore config and in here we're going to look for either challenge response authentication or kbd interactive authentication all you have to do here is switch this from yes to no and that will turn on that multi-factor authentication you can do it here and that will do it globally for every user on a system and again if you do that if you have users that won't have set up mfa make sure to have that null ok2 into your pam config in my case i'm going to set it up only for one user so what i'm going to do is here i'm going to leave it to no here and i'm going to go to the very bottom of my file where i'm having an exception here and allowing only one user to connect with password i did that in a previous video so in my case i only want to enable it for one user so the global one is going to be turned off but just for this specific user i want to have this kbd interactive authentication turned to on so i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it here here and once you have that done you can go ahead again save your file and say yes and then the next thing that you want to do after you did all these changes is go ahead and restart your ssh service and to do that all you have to do is run service ssh restart now once you have your service restarted the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to go and switch to the user that you're setting multi-factor authentication for so i'm going to do that by typing su and then the name of my user which is new underscore call user and I'm going to go ahead and switch to that user's home directory. Once I switch to the user's home directory, I'm going to go ahead and call in the Google Authenticator module. So you do that by typing Google Authenticator and hit enter and then the authenticator installation wizard will start for you and in this question, do you want authentication tokens to be time based? You're going to go ahead and say yes. And then you'll be presented with this QR code, which you're going to have to scan with your phone. Or if you don't want to use the QR code, you can use this uh, secret key, but it's much easier to just scan the code than type the key. So in my case, you can see that my code is kind of too big for my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here just like this and then i'm going to stretch it down like that so that way my phone can actually scan the entire code and then what you're going to have to do is go on your phone and make sure that you have downloaded the google authenticator app so if you haven't done that go ahead download it from your app store and once you have the app downloaded go ahead and open it on your device and from the app home screen go ahead and click on add code and then you'll be prompted with the screen that you can either select to enter setup key which will be this new secret key that i have highlighted down here or the other option is to scan the QR code and I'm going to go ahead and do the scan QR code and then you're going to want to center that code on your screen here and once you have that done you'll be presented with your multi-factor authentication token then down here you're going to have to enter that token so in my case right now is 973745 and then you can go ahead and hit enter. Then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in again so you can see better on my screen. 
go ahead and do that. That looks a little bit better. Once your code has been confirmed, you'll be provided with this emergency codes. And these emergency codes are basically backup codes. So in case you lose your phone or your phone dies or Google Authenticator app gets out of whack or something like this, and you are not able to authenticate, you can use these emergency codes to connect to your server. So make sure you have those someplace safe. The next thing here is going to ask if you want to update your Google Authenticator configuration file. Here you can go ahead and say yes. Then you'll be asked if you want to disallow multiple users of the same authentication token. So basically what that would do is it will make it so after every 30 seconds, the previous code will expire. So you want to do it that way because otherwise if somebody gets your code, they can use it later and that way they only have 30 seconds. So you want to say yes here. And then on this question here, unless you have any issues with synchronization, you want to say no. So try it with no, that's the safest way to go. But if you notice that sometimes your codes are not working, you can come back here and change this configuration. So again, I'm going to say no here. And on this one here, you want to say yes. What basically this one would do is if somebody enters three times the token wrong, the account will be locked down for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and say yes here. And once you have that done, you should be all set. So we can go ahead now and test it and see if it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new terminal window. And then in here, I'm going to try to SSH into my server and I should be asked for a token. There you go. As you can see now, I'm being prompted to enter my verification code. And so what you're going to want to do is go get your phone and open your Google Authenticator app. And once you have your Google Authenticator app, you're going to see your token and in my case, case right now is 478145 and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then I'll be prompted with for my password go ahead put your password and there you go you're in this is how you set up multi-factor authentication and SSH I hope this video was useful to you if you liked it please click on the like button if you want to see more of my videos please go ahead and subscribe for my channel and if you have any questions or any comments go ahead post under the video thank you very much for watching